Welcome back, everybody. It's another episode of The Cadre Concept. I'm your co-host, Chris Angel, and I'm here with your champion, <laughs> Shane Champion. McGraw. Well, you did this, and I was like, <laughs> Victorious. Victorious. I gotta be honest with you, Chris, that every time I hear, every time I have, like, these podcasts where we say The Cadre Concept, yeah. my heart is like, I just don't. I, I'm I <laughs> I love the cadre concept. The the whole concept of it is like this gift. It's like this onion, and every time I put my my hat on and I try <laughs> thinking like this, it's like so many layers. And I find I myself prefer- just I I really love this. This has been a fun it. journey for me. I would prefer to think of it as a parfait. Ooh, a parfait. <laughs> it's like layers. Ogres, of- <laughs> Ogres are like onions. Anyway, <laughs> I went, I went to Shrek. <laughs> we just got many layers. Uh, <laughs> nobody nobody likes an onion. Who likes a parfait? <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. All right. Okay. So let's talk about uh, some, uh, getting it all done today. Let's talk about getting, getting all it all done. So I've been thinking about this and I'm thinking, okay, in the concept of a cadre, meaning aligning yourself with highly skilled people being highly skilled yourself, hmm. coming together, working together to accomplish a specific goal or mission hmm. is a cadre, right? We know that's the, the framework of a cadre. Mm-hmm. And so I've been thinking about taking that mindset of a cadre, which is my goal is to get everybody to kind of develop this, this formula that they use to make decisions as it relates to the people equity of life. Because mm-hmm. the truth is, is businesses are easy, people are hard. Mm-hmm. I repeat, businesses are easy, people are hard. Everybody listening who's ever had a team member or been on a team knows that being on a team and having a team member is hard. Mm-hmm. People come, people go. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people burn the house down on their way out. Um, those of us who have a little bit of PTSD mm. from hiring staff, we have this, it's a bit challenging for us to trust one because we're carrying the baggage of another, mm. you know, and it's a bit hard. Like you see these telltale signs of things you've learned in the past and you start to go, Oh, like I'll give an example. I have a gal that I won't use any names, but I have a gal with my insurance agency that has decided to, to quit. And she gave me her two week notice a while back. She was very gentle gracious and she worked hers. I have a lot of respect for her, her process of parting ways. Mm. But in the process, she had a couple of things that she wanted that I want to bring out later. But, um, and I had a couple of emotional responses based on my PTSD into the past. Mm. So I want to talk about getting it all done, using people equity and the mindset around the cadre. Uh, remember the cadre is a concept where it's how do you do business with people in the center? Mm. and you know collaborative where no one person is more in person than the other every person is part of a philosophy we're all pieces of a puzzle that make it all go and the fact that it's really really hard it takes renewing a renewed spirit and my goal is as a culture for cadre concept that people can come to our page come to our communities on facebook and share this you know the wins and the losses and the lessons being learned around working in the people business because Mm. we know that no matter what you have a ceiling on you that caps you you can only do so much without working with others right and the truth is is if you work by yourself you'll be empty you know we're wired to work together it's the way we're wired two by two we're supposed to go and the cadre concept is this idea of what if we recognize that there's a formula for the people business Mm -hmm. it doesn't make it easy but there is a formula and we can all work together to refine our version of the formula yeah does that sound fair yeah i love it I mean, okay. I, when I think of getting things done, I think of my to-do lists or, you know, stuff I'm right. doing by myself. So I love that there's a frame that exists with the cadre concept that getting it all done may include routines or individual p- processes, but that you're also bringing in the conversation of other people. Yeah. And I think it starts with people first. I mean, I think that if I were to do a tagline for this, getting mm-hmm. it all done, it, mm-hmm. it'd be, get it, getting it all done would be the secondary uh, to working together as a team and then getting it all done because then there's segmentation of time and efforts right. and skills and abilities and all of a sudden two become better than one but it has to be done intentionally mm-hmm. because sometimes two yeah. can become a prison that. for one right and yeah. it can right, be right. challenging listen hurt people hurt people we know that and yeah. every one of us are broken every one of us fall short every one of us are shitheads we all <laughs> we all have a little bit of something we're carrying um you know we're we're hard to be married to we're we're not you know I'd love to say that I'm a great father, but I'm also a heavy father. I have baggage from my childhood and from my things that I bring into the, into, into being a dad that I could probably leave out. Right. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. my heart's in the right place and my kids know that, and they make allowances for their father's shortcomings with 
knowing that my heart's in the right place. And I think people just like your family and your workplace will do the same. Mm. You know, they'll, they'll get on your team knowing you're broken. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Because they're yeah. broken too. So let's talk about getting it all done and kind of what I've been wrestling with. Um, you know, just to give some framework for the listeners, if you, this is your first time listening, um, I'm a guy who uh, cannot focus on any one thing terribly much. So what I've had to learn is for a long time, people would say, Oh, you're too busy. Um, mm. I don't know how you get it all done. Or they would give me the look that says you must be a bad father or a husband or like, there's no way you do all that unless you're giving up some things. Oh, right. Yeah. Wow. And I've always felt guilty of that and felt like, man, that's heavy. And maybe there's truth to that. Am I lying to myself? Cause a lot of rich people that are really successful, I'll ask them, you know, what's your thoughts? And one of the things they always say is, you know, uh, you know, covet your marriage. Don't let it fall apart. If you mm-hmm. climb the ladder and 20 years later, you get divorced, mm-hmm. you know, it cuts your wealth in half. It cuts your momentum in half. It's, it's just crippling for the process. Yeah. And they said it would, you know, almost every one of them, there's this guy named Frank, and he like grabbed me and was like, listen, don't let your marriage, mm. you know, be a, 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 a negative byproduct of your growth and your success. Mm. It's like that happened to me. And I, he's like, though it wasn't all my fault, I neglected the most important person, the most important client I had. Mm. And that was my wife. Yeah. He's like, so I have all this stuff, but I have no best friend anymore. Um, and I just thought, man, I, I want to learn from that. So mm. how do you have people come in and out of your life and by no means am I a poster child on this, but this is what I'm working on every day. Yeah. Is how do I get it all done using people where people can come and go flowing through me, where they become my friends at a later date or people that I can still call, even if they're not on my team. Right. Yeah. Okay. A little bit long winded maybe, but that's yeah. kind of my, my wrestling match is how do I do this? Right. So with this gal kind of giving me her two weeks, it, it leaves my, the rest of my staff, um, you know, I have a big insurance agency in my town and I just bought it a couple of three months ago. And obviously the hardest part of that is, is that I'm not yet the best insurance agent in the town mm. because I don't actually know insurance well enough to say that, mm. but I can hire people around me that have those skills and together we can be the best agency. Mm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. um, I've been having to, I've been sitting down with these older gentlemen who have a high expectations of my insurance skills and trying to transfer the trust um, have them trust my agency instead of their agent. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's different. Yeah. yeah, totally. I think you're right. Dude, a lot of people that listen to this, I think probably are owner operators. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think so. And so I think a lot of times in the beginning you're, you're hustling, trying to, trying to get it going. And so you have yourself, your own time, your own assets, your own energy. And so there is a massive shift. Um, I've seen when people, step out of being the owner operator and they step into being um, the coach or the, the, the person who calls shots, but the person who, the coach, the person who has a team, right? Like there's a mindset shift. Mm. Um, yeah, so, you know, yeah. the center of the cadre concept really is leadership mm. and it starts with leading yourself and then having the ability to lead others and leadership in its purest form is finding within other people's skills and then helping them develop their skills to bring out the best version of themselves. Yeah. with an earnest effort for them to do it for themselves, not because you demand it, but because mm. you call them to it. Mm. You inspire that within them. Mm. And by no means do I get it right. And sometimes I'm like, wow, that I'm doing really great. And then, you know, no sooner than I think I got it figured out, then it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But uh, getting it all done. So yes. I'm a guy, I, 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 I buy and sell a lot of houses. That's the thing I do. Um, I have this coaching company I've been working on for a while and we're building some real legit content that's taken a lot of effort and time. Mm. Mm. Um, my, my wife and I do a lot of real estate now. She's, she's the real estate agent, but I'm, um, I'm, a um, I create momentum around finding real estate and putting deals together. And so we work mm. together on a lot of that. And her specialty is that she works the contractual side, but I help in the generation a lot. Yeah. And then, um, I, I'm a mortgage lender still. I have a team that does, you know, 90% of the work. My job is really to, um, you know, build rapport, you know, mm. try to figure out people's story and then make sure that we're giving them the product that matches their story. Right. Um, basically what I did is I took all the responsibility of being a mortgage lender and took it off of my plate and put my best use, which is helping other people make the best decisions they can financially. Mm. And that's all I do now. And people are okay with that. And it's been mm. really kind of cool because we're gaining a lot of momentum, but it's doing it the way that I feel called to and accepting that, you know, I can't be the top lender uh, today. 
and I may never be the top lender, but I'm going to be stay true to what I'm willing to do, what I'm best at. Mm. Dude, there's something in that that I don't know. I mean, this I don't know if this is where you want to go, but I feel like there's something in it where we we often can have, or I could say I've had, um, I've put identity in the results I produce, and so if I'm used to producing good results, the minute I give that away, so somebody else is closing the loans, for example, and I'm no longer doing that, it brings up a question of like, what do I do next? Where do I find my identity or my value in next? Mm. I think that's one of the things that blocks people from hiring. Uh, a team because yeah. they're used to the payoff they get from producing the result. I know for me, like, you know, one of my biggest fears is, is what if I walked into my insurance AG, agency, I got 2,500 families that are depending on me to provide them quality insurance mm -hmm. and to represent them well, because it's a very important part of people's financial story. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what good is a great offense if there's no, not a good defense. Right. Right. You know, I mean, you see defense wins championships, right? Like we've all heard that. And, if you watch like, yeah, the, remember when the Seahawks were in the playoffs and the championship and they were in, it was, it was a big game. They're playing the number one offense against the number one defense. What was the score of that game? It was like 48 to eight or something. It was like stupid. We destroyed them. Yeah, yeah. And the reason we destroyed them, in my opinion, is because our defense was smothering mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. point where they were playing our game and we weren't playing theirs. The defense yeah, yeah. set the tone of the game so our offense could play the offense the way they wanted because we had their defense on their heels. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. once you're chasing the score, it's a different mindset than when you're leading the score. Right. Yeah. yeah. So getting it all done. I want to talk about that. So here's, here's a couple of the points I have. So if you're taking notes, um, one of my convictions on this podcast is to, you know, I definitely want to cast vision cause that's who I am, but I also want to give you tactical things that you can use and implement in your day to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to kind of give you a couple real granular things that you could put in place today. So getting it all done. Um, here's what I found. It's not possible. So that's the first thing is you got to accept that you're not able to be perfect. And so if you have a standard of perfection, um, mm -hmm. I think it comes to this is the first principle in getting it all done is managing expectations. Mm -hmm. So write that down. If you're, if you're trying to get it all done, you know, managing expectations is, is a lot of times, Chris, if I say to you, if we're in a business partnership and I say, hey, I can't get that done till Friday and you were hoping I can get it done on Monday. Um, so we have a different time. Yeah. Expectation. You can, you cannot, you and I can still say yes to Friday. Hmm. We can. Yeah. We just have to talk it out. Right. Right. Um, manage the expectation. Yeah. Manage the expectation. And so you yeah. can say, you know, Shane, I'm just not available. Like I called my lender today and I said, Hey, can I, I text her and said, Hey, can you talk? And she said, not till 1130 because I'm taking my kids to school. Hmm. I was annoyed in the sense that I want to talk to her now, but yeah. I respect the boundaries of taking her kids to school. So I said, great, I'll be available at 130. And then we scheduled it and it worked fine. If she would have said, uh, sure, I'll talk to you while I'm driving and momming and I'm going to talk yeah. to you. She would have actually done me a disservice mm -hmm. because she wouldn't have been here with me. She would have been or with her kids. So she's yeah. like, she's getting it all done by multitasking, but mm -hmm. she's actually not present where she's present. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we know that that's a, that's not those of us who have lots on our plate. We recognize that we got to put a check mark. We got to finish everything we start. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yep. So one of the things of getting it all done is understanding that perfection is not the standard best effort is I have a mm -hmm. sign above my light switch that says I've done my best and my best was good enough mm -hmm. because every day I do my best. Now the question is how do I manage my team? Well, so I'm going to try to address this if it's okay, Chris, in two yep. mindsets, one, if you have a team and one, if you're going to, if your goal is to get a team, okay. and if your goal is to stay with no team, then you probably should stop listening to this podcast. Mm. Yeah. There's no cadre there. We're not, we're not about individual sports. We're about collaborative sports. Mm -hmm. So if you're not relating to the topic, it's probably not for you. Um, so if you have a team, here's your mindset. And then if you don't, if you, if you're working on building a team, I'm going to give you a mindset too. So having a team, I think there's a couple frameworks. One of them is, is every meeting or every team must have a meeting and every meeting must have an agenda. Mm -hmm. So it needs to be a start time and a stop time. And that needs to be consistent. I suggest every day. And here's what you accomplish in your meeting. Okay. It's, it's, it's a, it's a probably three to five minutes of, Hey, you're human. I'm human. Let's talk about being human. How was your weekend? How's mm -hmm. life? How's your husband? Is his health? Okay. Like it's that stuff mm -hmm. because you are doing business with people. Right. Yep. And uh, remember this meeting is set up in a way that helps you, um, you know, kind of get a lot of that, you know, collaborative communication out, out of the way in the beginning. So I strongly suggest it being in the morning as a bookmark, 
um, like you ever seen the bookends of yeah. a, like the book yeah. show? Yeah. I think you should have a meeting in the beginning and the meeting at the end, and they should have different different um, different measuring sticks, if you will, different Agendas different goals or points or intentions. Yeah, the yeah. first one hmm. is you're setting. Basically, this is a delegation meeting where everybody's reporting on their activities that they're clearly communicated to, and hmm. then they're delegating to each other the fruits of the labor. So, hey, I called Johnny. Johnny says he needs life insurance. I told him about Russ, our life insurance guy, and he's expecting a call from you. I put it on the calendar for two, just, mm-hmm. just putting you in the mindset. By the way, they just had a son that died, that some sensitive situation. You're going to have to, you know, just, you know that going in, Russ. Right. Russ is like, great, taking it down. I'm in the right mindset. Can we talk offline later or something if it's needed? So th- that's the way that me and Russ and this other person can collaborate in a way where we're serving the client but we're serving yep. it collaboratively in the cadre concept because we're setting each other up for success. Yep. Russ is highly skilled. The other person's highly skilled and I'm running a meeting that helps other people be prepared for their day. Yeah. Yeah. Me? Got it. Yep. yep. So good quality meeting with an agenda. It should have a start time and a finish time and it should have some talking points. I have a little best practices for meetings. If anybody wants it, they can email me mm-hmm. or whatever and I can give it to them. How um, long is that morning meeting? I think 15 minutes is probably max. Yep. If yeah. you come to one of my meetings, I'm a long-winded guy, so um, I have to have someone set a timer and hold me accountable that 15 because I could, I could, I could sure. soapbox and ruin the meeting. <laughs> okay, um, but I think you need at least one meeting a week that's a longer meeting that's like getting into the nuts and bolts of things. Right. And I think that's a pipeline-driven meeting. It's results-based. How many people are we serving? Mm-hmm. Let's take a temperature. How are they all doing? What's next? Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything we need to do? Um, let's look at our... You know, because there's always a beginning, middle, and end of business. So you got to generate leads. You got to have so many people that are working on, you know, saying yes to your product. And then so many people who have said yes. And you're kind of, all three stages have to be real and evident. Otherwise, um, you have a hole in your game, right? If you're generating no new business, then you're not going to have the process of maturation. Right. Yeah. So you got to talk about those. Okay. Um, I like it. Okay. So to keep it simple for a big team, have an agenda, start, stop time. Um, you're going over delegation and then you're talking about your four or five big conversion metrics every day. How many leads did we get? How many applications did we take? You know, how many face-to-face meetings do we have? You know, how many quotes, loans, applications, mm-hmm. whatever did yeah. we, did we put in and how right. much is, how big is our pipeline and where is it at? And then how does all that relate to our, our daily, weekly, monthly goal? Got it. And then the, just uh, you mentioned the evening one, like the bookends, like is, what's your intention on the end of the day? Is it the same, like just a check-in, like, what happened today or? Um, in my opinion on a bookend, this, this could be done a lot of different ways, but in my opinion, it's the leader casting, encouraging vision. Mm. Hey, I saw this today. That was awesome. Mm. Hey, um, and I don't think it's a meeting. It could be an email. It could be a video. It could be a quick rah, rah at the end. It could be a, I think a huddle, maybe everybody standing for five minutes, just saying, how did the day go? A lot of people don't do the end meeting, but I think when you delegate, there's three yeah. parts of delegation. You have to clearly define what you want have mm-hmm. them repeat it back to you so they clearly know what they're expected. And then mm-hmm. you have to inspect what you expect. Mm-hmm. So if you don't yeah. have that expect at the end, people yeah. will stop respecting the first two. Mm-hmm. Right, Does that right. make sense? Yeah, yeah. If you totally. they do this and then you never check to see if they did it, they'll stop taking it serious. That's good. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, okay so that's, that's a meeting. Um, I don't want to ruin, I don't want the podcast to be all about a meeting, but I wanted to understand that if you're not having meetings as a team, mm-hmm. then you're probably not leading your team you're responding to the minutia of life. Good. Right. Um, every time I lose sight of my meetings, I recognize my team is not, they're leaderless, mm. leaderless. And you, by the way, I, so my, my, my insurance team meets every day at 8.30 for 15 minutes. I only attend the Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but it still happens on Tuesdays and Thursdays without me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. So you have to have a leader that steps up and they lead the meeting. The leader shouldn't be the one leading the leader should be the one emceeing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And side note, I mean, you know, not to downplay the role of meetings either. Like, you know, it's like, well, there's a book a years ago called death, death by, by meeting. meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I think we all meetings get a bad rap, but I think to your point of like, if you're going to get it all done at some point, there's some very logistical and like practical things that need to happen. And I think meetings serve a very important role in how you, you know, grow your, your team. So, well, the cadre concept, when we teach the business side of things, we talk about a 52 week um, playbook 
that's mm. what we're building. And so if we could start with what we want it to look like when it's done after 52 weeks and we can work backwards, we can break it all the way into daily activities. So we have a daily one page that's all the proactive behaviors that we need to have. Mm. And my team turns that in and communicates, excuse me, about the results of that every team meeting. And then we delegate from there. So we're, yeah. we're tracking. So as an insurance agency, we're tracking how many outbound calls were made, how many great conversations were took place. And we have standards. You have to have at least 20 outbound calls. You yeah. have to have at least 12 community, you know, quality conversations about serving people and, 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 and growing our agency. Mm. And then we have, you know, you need to quote, you know, at least five people a day. Mm. You know, you need to be in it. You know, a law of averages says if you quote so much, you'll get so much, you know. Sure. And, and when you're doing insurance, you're trying to expose people to that risk and then help them hedge their bets and protect right. themselves. Yeah. You're trying to transfer the risk from the person to the entity. Mm -hmm. And so we need to expose those solutions to the consumers as often as we can so they can have the opportunity to, to protect themselves. And, you yeah. know, there's different seasons for different people. Like me, I have a lot more insurance than most people Yeah. because I have right. a lot of things I'm exposed to. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, where was I going with that? Well, what other things besides meetings? So you said, you know, in addition to meetings, what other parts up to getting it all done are there? Do you want to go there next? Uh, yeah. Thank you, Chris. Um, okay. So a couple other things that's super encouraging that I think is tactical for you mm. is, um, I believe that you have to have some level of a power hour or of a plan for your day. And that power hour, this is when you do your highest and best use. And a good leader will be a, he'll be in his highest and best use. And I'll talk about what that is. And then every person will be in their highest and best use. Mm -hmm. So what I always tell my staff is every one of you have a major and a minor. The major is, is these are the things you must get done no matter what else happens in the day. These are absolutes. Mm -hmm. So like, for instance, my, one of my people, her, she loves this. She makes fun of me all the time. She doesn't like it. She's a director of first impressions. Her job is to greet people when the door opens mm -hmm. and make them feel special. And her job has three parts before, during, and after a meeting. So mm. she has to call them with a warm advice, make sure that, or warm voice, and make sure that they're coming to their meeting, and yeah. then send, the, send the, the email and the text and whatever we do for communication to make sure they do, we have a high show up rate. She yeah. has to put the work in to make sure people show up to the face-to-face -face appointment because we're a face-to-face -face appointment agency. Right, right. We believe we should have at least 10 face-to-face -face appointments a day. Mm. So we're working at that, and there's five people doing that, so that's two a day. So that's something we track, right? How many, and we always track two weeks out, how many appointments do we have this week and how many are projected for next week? Mm. So that if next week isn't where we want, we can put in the, the work this week to get it, to fill it up. Right. So it's a two right. week rolling. Yep. Um, it, and if you're in this business, in my opinion, if you want your business to have roots that are deep, meaning it's, you're not susceptible to the ebbs and flows of the economy and price right. shifts and all that stuff, yep. you need to be in the face to face business, not in the plural business. A lot of people are like, oh, let's just throw some Facebook marketing at it. I genuinely believe that should be over and above your foundation. Yeah. And your foundation should be your belly to belly business. Mm. Um, that should be what keeps the lights on. The other stuff should be how you do a lot of averages. You find 10 people from a surface relationship and migrate them down to three. And then you pick one that goes into the face to face relationship. Mm. That's the social media approach. It's great, is yeah. just about getting to one more quality relationship. I love that. Every day, one more quality relationship, not to have a bunch of plural surface relationships because they come as fast as they leave as fast as they come. Mm, that's good, man. Um, so getting the most out of your day is uh, everybody needs to be in their highest and best use for a, concert, a specific amount of time. So for us, I call it the nine to noon philosophy. That's mm -hmm. win your day by noon. And it takes place between the hours of nine to noon in the morning. So I, everybody on my team starts at eight. They do planning and face, you know, they kind of work on their lists and whatever they got going on, but they need to be ready to start picking up the phone and calling people, right? Yeah. yeah. And once you do this, what happens, it creates this thing where you already have 10 or 15 calls you need to make because every day you're scheduling more appointments and more calls that follow ups that you need to make to where it's not so much like, what am I going to do today? It's only how am I going to add, you know, yeah. maybe 50% of the proactive behaviors, but the rest of it's already been engineered yeah, because yeah. of days prior, right? It's a compounding right. effect. Um, but that nine to noon, if it's coveted and everybody on the team is in their highest and best use based on their major, mm. then the rest of the day is on their minors, right? It's meeting face to face. It's doing milk routes, dropping off gifts, going and seeing people in their place of business. It's the stuff where you get to go and the clock isn't so much, you know, the, the results is more the relational component instead of the, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. Yeah. Am, am I making sense, Chris, or am I a little? Totally. 
Okay. No, you're totally making sense. You had mentioned too in the beginning. So there's, there's two people, there's people who have a team and there's people who are going to have a team. Right. Um, what did, what are the people who are going to have a team? Like, where do they start with this getting it all done piece? It sounds, well, let me summarize. Like the people who have a team getting it all done is really sounds like coming down to delegation, managing expectations, making sure, inspecting what you expect, like yeah. and having process for that. Yeah. Cause that's how you get it done through other people, through others. That's leadership. Absolutely. How do we get it done if we're like building our team? We have our first assistant. Maybe we don't even have our assistant yet, but we're on that path. Like, how do we get it all done? Yeah, I'm going to go into the assistant thing at another podcast, but um, just kind of talking about how you develop your team member. We're going to start with you. Mm -hmm. And so the key ingredient to having a team and to getting ready for a team is your internal leadership. It's who you are. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about that if that's okay. Yeah. And then we'll do hiring an assistant as a whole podcast. Okay. Um, So here's how I see it. Personal leadership, um, how are you going to lead others if you don't lead yourself? Hmm. So it's like, are you doing a nine to noon? Are you, do you have time in your calendar marked off to work on your business instead of in your business? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Do you have a, uh, if you're for instance, uh, one of the things that I do is I recruit for at least an hour to two hours every week hmm. because I have to build my virtual bench to have new team members mm-hmm. because I have a team and I'm always needing new ones. Right. Yeah. My thing is, is I buy businesses and I do do high level things to have an excuse to hire more people. Hmm. It's, it's really a mindset is I believe the more people that I have that I'm s- stewarding over it and, and trying to give them the, the, the opportunity to be in their highest and best use. And, you know, some people are really good at what they're good at and I'm just not good at that. So if we get the two of us together, I'll be good at what I'm good at. They'd be good at what they're good at and we're better together. Yeah. So I create, I create um, a need for people and partnerships through business Mm-hmm. And then I work on the leadership of leading myself and leading others. So if you're a, if you're a person right now who's looking to build a team, the first thing for you to do is start managing your calendar mm-hmm. systematically as if you have someone else. And so what I always do is I create everything. So a lot of people hire and lean into this. If you're never hired a team member, I'm going to save you a lot of anguish right here. A lot of people hire their first hire to figure out how to get them to do all the stuff they don't want to do. That's the wrong approach. The right approach is to get them to do all the stuff that you must do. Mm. They're your consistency. They're mm. not your catch-all. Mm. So when you're going to hire someone, you got to have a clear job. And I believe a job looks like this. It's one core competency, three measurements, and then three sub-measurements of each of those measurements. Mm. So it could be answering the phone. And then it would be within three rings, taking thorough, complete messages and making sure that you know, the client is fully satisfied with the phone call. That's just, there's a two bullets. And the third one is, is following up every conversation with an email, recapping the solution so that we're checking both modalities because emails are time and date stamped and they're kind of official. Right. So it, it, if I say, well, did you talk to Steve? Well, he said you didn't. Well, I did. I even sent a recap email. Here it is. Mm-hmm. That's how you keep that congruency with your, with your clients. Yep. So I require that all conversations of, of, of significance are followed up with an email, especially if there's a promise made. Tell me that. So it's one core competency. And then what were the three in the second three? It's one core competency. Like um, hypothetically yep. generate those loans a month. That's your, yep. that's your job. And then you're going to do it in three. You're, you're going to be measured, measured. by three yeah. activity sets. Got it. Yeah. 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 That lead to that result. Yep. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so great. I think if you don't answer your phone, you don't, you won't do 10 loans. So maybe I put a phone competency in there because right. that's, if this is done well, it'll lead to your 10. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, I love that. Yeah. And there was a second, was there a second th- set of three? Um, there's subsets. So it's like, it. if you have a thing that says like, um, you know, answer the phone, right. then you want to say, this is the three things that you need to, How you do it. to answer this phone. Got it. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I love yeah. that. That's a great one. And model. it could be, yeah. I could give you examples, but the truth is, is most job descriptions are these long six page descriptions <laughs> right. and the person signs the bottom and puts them in the drawer and then they just solve the, the merits of the day. I think you should have a contract yeah. and then a core competency job description. And then every 90 days you go over that job description. How do you feel like you're going on these areas specifically? Right, right, right. You know, it's more specific. Yeah. So if you don't have a team, how do you build one? You got to start building a list of things that you have to do every day and then do them in your nine to five block hmm. and do them well enough that you have it down to a system where you can pass that system on to someone else. Mm-hmm. So you should have your own core competency with your three subsets and then your, your, your three measuring sticks and then your subsets of those measuring sticks. And you should be 
marching to them. And then at some point you could take one of those core subsets and pass it to someone else. That's and good. then, yeah. and then you can replace yours with a higher purpose, yeah. you know, higher dollar producing activities. Yeah. So my thing is, is this is time management where you're actually freeing up time to do what you're best at so that someone else can do what they're best at. Right. Like me, I don't do, I, I'm not a great writer. I'm not a great like stare at paperwork and do financials for three hours kind of guy. Mm -hmm. So I've learned that I can hire people who actually love that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So good. I love that. So self-leadership is a big deal. Like, I mean, you got to do the work that you're going to expect others to do. It's self -leadership. Yeah. yeah. Most people don't have the courage and I'll tell them this. And then what happens, Chris, I'm telling you, it's like almost every time I talk to someone, mm -hmm. they'll say, I want to hire my first person. I'll say, do this. And then they'll hire the first person and they'll do just the opposite. They'll say, here, <laughs> no training no guidance, no real material like explanation of how to do things. Here's a stack of paperwork, figure it out. I'll see you in a week when you figure it out. And then that person will develop all the bad habits because they weren't trained. And then right. you're going to go, why are you not doing everything I told you to do? Yeah. And they're going to go, well, because you never really told me, you know, A, what to do and B, mm. if I did it well enough to meet your needs. Mm. So now I'm just doing my best. That's and that, do it, someone doing their best the only way people are successful is with clarity of what mm -hmm. specifically you want them to do that makes them feel like they did their job well. And you're like, thank you. You earned your paycheck today. Yeah. You know how much job satisfaction people want mm -hmm. by just knowing they did a good job by you. Mm -hmm. It's super wow. huge. Yeah. Do you dropped a lot of uh, bombs today? You dropped a lot of wisdom bombs. Too much. No, I mean, okay. <laughs> I mean, what's too much? You're like, Hey, listen, I, that was, too much good stuff today. I don't want like scale back the good stuff. No, I think it was great. I think it's, um, I think what's valuable about this kind of content is people can keep coming back and listening over and over again. Mm. Do you ever, do, I'll save episodes that I love. Do you ever do that? And like, I'll re-listen. Oh, sure. Yeah. I'm very much a repetitive. When I find something that works, I'll listen to it as yep. many times as I, yep. I'll take notes. Yep. And I think this yeah. is the, this is one of the skill sets or even mindsets that um, a lot of people wrestle with, like in, to cross over from owner operator to, like building a cadre, building a mm -hmm. team, building a, a bigger business, which is what I think a lot of us are after. This is, this is one of the things I think we sort of <laughs> ignore or don't look at. Just like you said, like you'll tell somebody what to do and then they do the opposite because we're resistant to the work, whatever the work is, whether it's self-leadership or. Whatever. Yeah. Another thing I always tell people is when you hire someone, you got 90 days, 90 days, hmm. in my opinion, should be completely in beta without a scorecard. It's just, I'm going to give them something. I'm going to watch them perform. I'm going to subjectively look at it without emotion. Like, oh, these guys are stupid. Like, mm -hmm. that's stupid. That's a horrible method. People are not stupid. People mm -hmm. just, your job is, there is no bad employees, just bad leaders. Mm -hmm. So are you a person who is providing them clarity? And then what you do is you watch them fall and you go, hey, Johnny, what led to that is you put the shoes on the wrong feet. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's correct that. And then I want you to do it again. I'm going to watch it again. And then Johnny's like, well, I'm uncomfortable. This is hard. I don't want to do role playing. I don't, I don't like to keep track of what I'm doing, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah. then all of a sudden Johnny's like, dude, I did it and it worked. And now I feel like a champion and now I'm okay. With, now put that block on my foundation and I can work from that now. Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, Johnny's bearing more fruits in that department than you are because he's actually better at it than you. He just needed to mm. develop the, the tactics. Yeah. 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 <sighs> so good, man. So cool. good. Listen, is this the, I just, I need to know, um, cause I know you're, you're in the fortress over there, um, building out epic, uh, course, uh, material and, um, stuff for people to learn your coaching programs. Like, is this yeah. the kind of stuff that we get to dive into deeper inside of your programs? Yeah. Um, so I have like three tiers. So I have like, here's my stuff, go and implement it on your own with no accountability. Here's just some tools. Some mm -hmm. people need that. That's where they're at. Yeah. So maybe you're one of those people that just like, Hey, I just need something to tune into and give me a chance to play with it for a while and see if it fits me. Yeah. You have that. Yeah. And that's just basically pay month, pay, pay every month and you get some tools and resources and you get to lean into some, some stuff. And then we have the, you know, I'm going to pay a little bit more and I'm going to get more. And then, mm -hmm. you know, that's a lot, a lot of that's just more people doing what you're doing so that you can have co collaboration. And right. then there's the, I get Shane stuff. Mm -hmm. And, what we just talked about right now is a lot more because everybody's so unique. Mm. I can provide basic processes for a team, but um, it's one of those right. things that it's probably more done person yeah. to person. Love it. So good. And if people want to find out more about those tiers and sort of the others, like all the stuff you're working on, where do they go? 
cadreconcept.com and then any cadre concept in iTunes, whatever, you can just go search us and start tuning in. I think that my number one goal with the cadre concept is that people will tune in and get, and start getting something out of it. And then if it seems to be resonating in them, they'll lean in deeper. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. That's it. This is like the ultimate test drive. Like you get to kind of see like, if it resonates, like you said, then yeah, then the, by the way, this is, I think it's important to say, uh, it's my own soapbox, but uh, when you find something that resonates, like you said, it's time to lean in. There's a lot of people who are consuming content that resonates and they're not leaning in. So they go consume right. some other stuff and some other stuff. And the development and your, you getting to the next level happens when you press in to the relationships and, and the, the processes and the stuff under the surface of the stuff that inspired you. Yeah, great, you're inspired, but it's process that transforms, not in, inspiration gets you excited. It's the, the process that creates a transformation, right? That's wise, Chris. Yeah, I That's heard really it once. I, I wish I could take credit for it, but yeah. when I heard it, I was like, dude, that is good because it's the process that creates transformation. As I reflect on my day, I mean, I'm always inspired by different people's messages. That's not hard to do. I mean, because right. I'm looking for it, right? right. Yeah. But how many of those people do I actually tune out everything else and say, okay, I'm going to let Chris speak into my life for three months and I'm going to listen and try to <laughs> right. implement right. the things he's saying before I, because a lot of people come in and go, ah, Chris, you're falling short. Sorry. Well, yeah. you didn't even do the formula. How do you even know if the cookie tastes good? <laughs> you didn't even go through the process. You know what I mean? Right. You didn't even make the cookie. Yeah. So seriously. I love All that. right. Well, thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, I, I'm just stuff. inspired about the collaboration. And I think if you don't know how to be a leader and you're not, you don't have a desire or hunger to be, you know, I, you, you always got to do the work here, right? So that you can yeah. help others. But yeah. if you don't have the desire to get in the people business and understand that there's the best investment you can make is in, in, in the lives of others, yeah, you're going to miss. Um, it's the hardest thing you'll ever do. Remember, yeah. pe business is easy. People are hard. But the fruit of working together is better than the fruit of doing it alone. Mm. And it yeah. just is sweeter and tastes better. It's just better. It's awesome. I love it. Good stuff, man. Great message. Good stuff today. Thank you so much. Uh, Thanks, until man. next time, take care. Contra Concept out. Ooh.